orcs or a thousand orchid blossoms a love story um before we get into stuff um we would like to acknowledge that we are well at least i am today currently uh, streaming from the unceded stolen land of the Musqueam, uh, Squamish, and Salidwotooth nations. Um, it is colonially known as Vancouver, uh, BC. Uh, we will be, uh, I'll, say, I'll be streaming from here. We have players from other areas uh, that are joining us today, and I'll leave it to them mm -hmm. if they would like to acknowledge where they are streaming from, um, or just let us know where they are joining us from. Uh, my name is Alex, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be the GM, aka the Gay Orc Master, for this game. Um, we are going to go round in the order that I see on my screen. Um, we are going to introduce the players, and then we are going to very briefly introduce the game and create characters on stream. Um, looking at my screen, the next person to go is going to be Colin. Hello, folks. Uh, my name is Colin, pronouns are he, him. Uh, and this was as close as I could get to <laughs> an art costume. Uh, Colin is wearing a piggy nose. Um, in case people are listening to this and not watching the video, Colin is wearing a piggy nose and looking fabulous with it. Uh, next, after Colin, I have Sam. Hey guys, my name is Sam. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I'm coming at you live from the unceded territories of the Slewtooth Squamish people. I'm really excited to be a big gay orc. Thank you, Sam. Sam is wearing full orc cosplay, green skin, pointy ears, uh, wig, everything, Perfect. tusks, uh, fur, <laughs> vest. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a smorgas bird. It, it's a smork. Gas board. Um, <laughs> the puns begin. Uh, after Sam on my screen, I have Jesse. Hello, everybody. I'm just Jesse D. My pronouns are they, she. I'm a scientist, writer, and sometimes voice actor. You can find me at just Jesse D over on the Hive social app or the dark side of the internet on Tumblr at just dash Jesse dash D. I am streaming today from the traditional territories of the Anishinaabek and Haudenosaunee people. And next to Jesse D, we have Eric. Hi, my name is Eric Pavey. Uh, I, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I am a manager at a brew pub at Wayfinder Beer. Um, a little plug, we do a DD and d night once a month. Uh, called Goblin Up, which is the fourth uh, <laughs> Monday of every month. I know, right? <laughs> Goblin Up. It's like uh, leveling up and then eating. That is just the epic. It's so great. good. And it's and so it's, much it's, fun. It's, it's so filthy. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to me. And um, I am a, feel like a terrible person, but I am streaming from Portland, Oregon. And regrettably, if you could educate me on which lands these are supposed to be. Get in the comments, do. get in the comments and let Eric get know. Get in the comments and, and, and teach an old man, because I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm gayer than Christmas on ice. I'm wearing a shirt, chaotic gay, and I already look like an orc. So there. I'm very excited. I woke up, I woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> As uh, Taryn groans at me in dismay. Taryn, would you like to introduce yourself? Certainly. My name is Taryn Van Ettinger. Um, I just have a profile pic because I suck at video um, <laughs> and all the visual stuff. Um, I am a singer-songwriter um, and also part of a podcast. Um, I have a site where on soundcloud where i put up um music for various purposes um anything from ringtones to podcast beds to use it for what you want um <clears throat> i'm playing and streaming from the lands in part i know of the uh Oshati Shapuan, uh, for one. Um, Muskaki, I think I might be mispronouncing that, but um, I didn't memorize my 
local peoples, but uh, I know that there are many from whom this land, whose land this should still be by right. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's me. Um, my orcish put on, if you will, will pretty much be all vocal. So as long as you're listening, you'll get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you listen, you hear orc good. We shall see how these orc voices change, if at all, throughout the game. Um, um, <laughs> An attempt right, will be made. <laughs> We shall see. We shall see. Um, I, I have my giant tankard of ginger. Uh, I will be, which goes invisible in this uh, background, which is great. Um, so every now and then, my face just disappears in a tankard of nothing. Um, so the game we are playing today uh, for Raw Cat Reads is going to be big gay orcs. There are ways in which you can affect the story. You can affect the roles. You can affect how the players, including the GM. Um, will be districating themselves through this last night before the fall of the Orc Fortress. Uh, the Fortress, if you will. Um, <laughs> I'll stop. I won't. I will stop. No, I won't. <laughs> um, uh, Rocket Reads is... You could always uh, have donations to uh, to increase or <laughs> yes. decrease... Donate $150 well. right now to prevent me from making any more puns. 200 to continue, then. 200 to continue. <laughs> Oh no! I'll do it for free. Um, <laughs> that's the default setting. That's the default setting. Is just that's fun. the default setting. One hundred and fifty uh, bucks changes the default setting. Um, <laughs> B big gay orcs today is um, raising money for uh, Rainview Refugee. It is a non-profit organization based in so-called Vancouver. Uh, they support people seeking refugee protection in Canada due to persecution based on sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and HIV status. Uh, Raw Cat Reed specifically is raising money for the PRISM Collective. Uh, we are sm a small group uh, trying to raise $25,000 to help one specific named uh, anonymous. Um, for obvious reasons, uh, but named LGBTQ refugee move to Vancouver. Uh, we have currently raised over six thousand five hundred dollars uh, to that twenty five thousand. But your donations today will be going directly to that. Any donations in the silent auction will also be going directly to Rainbow Refugee. Uh, so get in the comments. Get in the comments and donate. Um, what are you donating for? Well. Donating, as we said, $150, and I will stop punning, um, but nudge nudge is $10 will give advantage to a role to any one player, including a GM NPC. Um, the ways that roles work in this game, you will see shortly, but your advantage basically gives an extra white die to any single player. Um, a $25 donation will trigger an in-game event, which will push push our orcs into having to make some hard choices, um, or some very easy ones, depending on the situation. Um, and then the $50 donation will create and name an NPC from the orc fortress. Um, this is going to be an interesting point, both in terms of me having to scramble and come up with extra names on top of the list that I already have in front of me, and also it might lead to harder difficult decisions to make if uh, you know a named character gets in trouble rather than an unnamed grunt from the fortress um, so as i said ten dollars one die of advantage 25 dollars an event roll and 50 dollars for a named npc um, i know raw cat reads is pushing these in the chat as well so you can take a look and we will be notified whenever donations come through and we will apply them to the game um, to begin, then, with our big gay orcs, um, we will create them. Um, we will going to be rolling on a table, which will give every orc uh, a reputation. It'll give every orc a secret. It'll give every orc a role and a motivation. Um, each orc will can then name themselves, either randomly or choosing a name for themselves. And then we will roll relationships between the six orcs that we will go to create. These are the main characters in the fortress. But before we go into that creation section, here is the setting. You are a champion amongst orcs. The warlord is dead by an assassin's hand, and you have received orders from the Great Khan. 
Your fortress is the last defense that stands between the armies of your enemy and your home city. You must sell your lives dearly. This may be your last night alive. As the sun sets, you see the fires of the enemy on the horizon and think of the life you've spent alongside the other orcs here. Can you tell them how you really feel here at the end of everything? We are choosing to interpret this love in all of the aspects and prismatic and kaleidoscopic versions of how love manifests itself. It doesn't have to be uh, lustful love only. It doesn't have to be physical love. It doesn't have to be, um, it can be any form, familial, fraternal, siblings, uh, platonic, friendship. Uh, we, the orcs can choose for themselves how they feel love towards other orcs. But they're still big, they're still gay, still orcs. Um, so, Character creation. If I could have each of the players to pick up a single d6, and we'll go round and we will roll on the reputation table to begin with. Um, if we can have Colin, if you could roll a d6 for me. Six. That is a six. Your reputation is that your orc is fearful. Oh no. Bit of a squirrely orc. Um, Jesse. Uh, roll your d6. I rolled a four. A four. You are the opposite. You are fearless. Ugh. You are a fearless orc. Well, at least that is your reputation. That, if that is true, we'll find out. Sam, you if you'd like to roll a d6. Got a four. Also fearless. We have two fearless orcs and <laughs> one fearful. You're really scared of everything and everyone else is like... <laughs> I'm like, mm, could we maybe like not please do that? Um, uh, Sam, if you could roll. Uh, sorry, uh, Eric, if you could roll a d6. All right. I got a two. A brutal orc. Brutal. Woof. Which is probably why uh, Colin's orc is uh, fearful. Um, <laughs> and Taryn, if you could roll your reputation, I'll roll a d6. Let me get that rolled up here for you. Um, this big old D6 that's about the size of a... Of a human... About an oh. inch square. Or inch cube. Or inch cube. That's a small old skull. Oh, I am a four. Also yeah. a four. We have a... These, this elite orc troop is made up of mostly fearless orcs. <laughs> One particularly brutal orc and a uh, little, little more fearful. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to be in the pig pen. <laughs> what we are going to roll next is going to be secret, and this is going to be a secret roll. So I would like all of you to roll a d6 and not tell us what you roll, but you have a table. Um, I will just read out the table for everyone to know. Uh, secrets include things like caring, creative, forgiving, intellectual, fearful, and romantic. Uh, it would be very funny if the fear, the orc that is has a reputation of being fearful is also secretly fearful, because that is, is just <laughs> funny. Um, but we will see. Or that the uh, uh, seemingly fearless orc turns out to be. Actually, rather fearful, but they yeah, yeah. The fearless show. is just you know projecting. You just attack before they can hurt you. Uh, so yeah, if you All roll right. your d6 in secret, don't tell me what you roll. Just note down which of the secrets characterize your orc, and then we will roll for the role that you have in this fortress. Um, the six roles that we have on our table are wilderness ranger. Omen Scryer, Warlord's ex-bodyguard, not because they were fired, but because the Warlord died, um, Master Weaponsmith, Beast Speaker, and Axe Thrower Sergeant. Uh, let's go the other way round, starting with Taran. If you roll a d6 for me. I did. I thought we were not revealing the Oh, this is result. for the roll, and not for the secret. Oh, for the roll. Okay. Um, yes, let me roll for the roll. Here we go. So I am a fearless... Mm. Fearless um, wank. <laughs> I am a fearless... Uh, 
the chat is already complimenting Sam on the makeup. And I the chat am is a correct. Fearless beast speaker. A fearless beast speaker. Mm. A fearless beast speaker. Incredible. Uh, Eric, yes. if you'd like to roll your d6 to determine your role. Let me write that down so I don't forget. <laughs> I am a brutal beast speaker. Ooh, tension already is formed so in the camp. Beast speakers. Grr. <laughs> Just oh, that's going to be interesting. As a note, um, in our session zero and in the conversations that we had in terms of safety tools, um, there will be no animal harm. Or, uh, there will be um, most animals in this game are protected by plot armor. So the brutal nature of Eric's orc's reputation probably does not apply. Probably to the does beast not he apply to. Yeah. to the critters. Yes, he just he's he, you know he's a brutal orc and he's a beast speaker. You know, the, yeah, the orcs contain multitudes. Yeah. Um, Geralt Sam. of Rivia, he talks to horses. <laughs> but hates everyone else. <laughs> Hurt orcs, not animals. Exactly, Trish. Um, Sam, if you could roll your d6 to determine your role. Two, we've got an omen scryer. Ooh, a fearless omen scryer. Ooh, lucky you. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Jesse, if you could roll d6. Warlord's ex bodyguard. Fearless. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, might be a little unsettling moment as the warlord. Like, the, the whole point that everyone is here right now is because uh, the warlord died. Um, which means, colon, if we could have your d6. Uh, this one kind of makes sense. I'm also a warlord's ex bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> one of us fears nothing. One of us fears everything. <laughs> very careful. <laughs> and I just realized that my orc also exists in this world. And my orc is a Pious Weaponsmith. With a secret of... <laughs> now, final two points uh, in uh, character creation before we uh, take the first donation to immediately influence the events. Thank you uh, for the donation. Uh, whoever donated those $25 to kickstart our events. Um, if you would like to name your orcs for me, um, if you already have a name, go ahead. I know at least one of you has a name already. Uh, you can also roll on a table. Can we roll motivation right now, too? We can roll motivation as well, yes. Uh, so if all of you roll a d6, we will determine motivation, and then we can add the name onto that. Good idea. So, is there motivation secret as well? A motivation does not have to be secret. We can, um, we can choose that now. Would you rather have the motivation be secret? Would you rather have the motivation be an open secret? I think if it comes up in one of our uh, like heart to heart moments or whatever we're calling them, yeah, yeah. Then... That would Let's be keep fair. it as a as an in-game secret rather than yeah. a um, unless it's uh unless someone feels particularly strongly about, you know, I want to die in battle. I was born <laughs> to die in battle, is just what I want to do. I know it's gonna happen. Um no, okay. Um, but I will go first with name and just say that my orc is again the pious weaponsmith called Pungar. <laughs> Thank you, Taryn. Thank you for acknowledging that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Colin, do you have a name for your orc? Uh, I rolled a three, so I am Moontooth, the <laughs> fearful Moon warlord's ex-bodyguard. Oh, Moontooth. <laughs> um, it's like Moon Moon, that wolf. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesse, if you could uh, tell us the name of your orc. I'm playing Grank, um, who is a fearless warlord's ex bodyguard. Grank. Grank. Moontooth. Also goes by Uncle Grank. Or oh, Grankle. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, you mean it? No. Granky, uh, though. Granky, it's okay. Could be Granky. <laughs> Uh, only Granky if no gets sleep. Um, Sam. I am name? Polish. Fearless Omen Scryer. What is your name again? Kolsch. 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 A lightly alcoholic beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric, what is your orc's name? Um, if you've ever driven east on Burnside, heading on the, on the west side, and you've seen the Volvo sign on the opposite side, my character's name is Ovlov. 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 <laughs> the Orc and Ovlov. I am a brutal beast speaker. Incredible. And Taran. Ovlov. 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 Or of love. love it. Of love, yeah. <laughs> I am Branak, the fearless Branach. beast speaker as well. The fearless beast speaker. Incredible. I should say. Yes. Um, okay. So the last thing that we will roll, and this is going to be... Um, I feel like this can also be a, a, a game secret, something that you will have uh, in terms of roll a d6 for every other orc. So each of you roll 5d6, uh, one for each character. Uh, so one for Pungar, or in my case, I will roll one for Moontooth, one for Grank, one for Kolsch, one for Ovlov, one for Branak, and determine what the relationship is. Um, examples that the instructions give us are things, uh, not only do you roll the relationship, you also roll the motivation for that relationship. So I will say that Pungar is, is quite open about how he feels um, about Moontooth. Uh, he is frustrated by Moontooth um, for obvious reasons. Uh, the warlord was um, uh, assassinated um, during uh, Moontooth's watch, and it was a little, you know, kind of like, you know, you had one job were two of you and still um, also Pungar is not going to say this uh, um, not going to say this one either <laughs> but is also a little frustrated with Ovlov probably from the brutality so brutal we have stereotypes people associate stereotypes with orcs and Ovlov just keeps living up to them and it's like okay. you know like just chill we don't need skulls with everything like i get it <laughs> but it's so last decade um and then branak uh however pungar respects branak but the, yeah, there's uh, two secret relationships that Pungar has towards Grank and Kolsch that we will find out. I think I misheard. Could I grab Terran's name again? A Branak. There we go. I heard Grank a second time, and I was like, that's going to be confusing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. No, all the characters are called Crank, Grank, Grank, Frank. Brank. Yeah. Wait, no, that's my goblin names. Never mind. Okay, so we have Pungar, Moontooth, Grank, Kolsch, Ovlov, and Branak. The, not the last remaining orcs in this fort, but the uh, elite. Uh, the, uh, they all have their roles, they all have their tasks, they all have their duties, and they have been, they have taken the message of the Khan at heart. We must give our lives, if needed, to defend this last stronghold against the pale fleshy things that keep attacking us. Uh, they have been encroaching upon our lands, they have been encroaching upon our ways of life, they have been, they've just been a pain in the butt, um, and a very painful pain in the butt. 
um, there have been deaths, there have been losses, there have been we've that clearly our way of life is in danger, and this is the last night we have to defend against their encroaching approach. Um, all of us begin with 20 points of hope, and we will lose hope depending on things that happen throughout the game. Uh, things like an unnamed character dies, um, we get hurt, or a character betrays us, we are at death's door, and the largest amount that we can lose hope for is if the fortress falls in enemy, enemy hands. <clears throat> But we have had two donations already uh, to trigger two events. Uh, so we are going to uh, roll one of those to start immediately. Uh, I'm going to get out my nasty D10 here. Um, so the way that events are triggered is that we are going to set the scene. We are going to see what everyone is doing. And then as the event is triggered, um, we will see how that scene develops. And if any orc at any point chooses mm -hmm. not to be defending the fortress in however way they want to interpret defending the fortress, they can choose to share a moment with another orc. This is the core mechanic of this game. You are going to be sharing a moment, revealing your feelings, spilling your heart out, and then see if that other orc is into it. Are you going to be making out in the ramparts? Are you going to be hiding and just holding hands watching the burning of uh, the burning of the fires on the horizon. Are you going to be petting the boars for a cute afternoon date? Um, that is up to you. And it is up to you to determine whether the intent and the attempt are successful. There is no die mechanic for it. Uh, I'm going to give it, leave the consensual element entirely up to the players. Um, and also, Gornak is uh, a named orc in this fort. Um, her pronouns are she, her, and she has a pet weasel. Um, we have just been donated a named NPC. Uh, this is Gornak. She has a pet weasel. And the town is burning with the passion of the fire in Trish's heart. Let's hope that is the only fire that burns in this town before the night is over. <laughs> But let's roll for the um, first event that will trigger our first setting. A dark omen descends, upsetting the troops. Our omen scryer, where are you? Kolsch, what is the omen that you determine? What do you see? that gives bad news to the rest of the fort. I see that there is blood in the water. But how is this possible? We have been defending the fort. We have been, we have been gaining land. We have been gaining. We've, we, we've been doing so well so far, says Pungar. Can't, can't argue. No, we cannot, we cannot argue the wills of the gods, but... Grank. Grank, what, what, do, you, what do you have to say of this? Like, how, how do we keep the troop morale going? We, we cannot let this affect any of them. Grank? Sorry, I was trying to help Taryn with a... Uh, they lost the the table for the relationships. <laughs> I zoned out for a second. There's a bad omen, blood in the water. What was the question? How do we keep the troops from panicking after they see this? I mean, you you work with Moontooth. Surely you know how to deal with people who are afraid of stuff. Oh, of course. Yes, the, the best thing to do would to just be face your problems head on. Don't even admit that they're problems. You just... You just run right into it. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? You just you just get up and you decide, I'm not gonna let this affect me. And then you just go for it. <clears throat> That's what I suggest. Anyways. Yes, yes Ovlov, you have something to say? 
drink is a gore, they like to go. So if they want to go, we will go. We are goers. That's really what I respect about you, of love. You just get me. Yes. <sighs> I won't get tired of this flattery and kissassery, but I, I, I admit that Ovlov maybe has a point here. Branek, what do you, what do you say of this omen? Should we let the troops know? It could be a questionable choice. If they know, I think we should be cautious in letting them know. Those who can be trusted to keep a level head, perhaps. But I think it would be unwise to just throw the knowledge out there to the troops at large. I feel... Perhaps we should contact Gornak. She might have a. She might have a, a, a. She might be the one with the level head that you speak of, Branak. And uh, yes, Moontooth. Uh, um, I go hide <laughs> to not tell people. So... If that is what you feel you really must do in this situation, I am sure that it will be of help if you go hide, I suppose. Do you need anyone to come with you? Uh, um, I... Ovlov? Maybe? Ovlov. Moontooth is asking for your presence to go inform, not inform the troops of the omen. Check on the boars. Maybe. Moontooth. <laughs> I do not think that you need me to check on the boars. But I appreciate you wanting to include me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm flattered, but... If, if you want to take me to the boar pit, I will go with you. Oh, oh, um, uh, um, yes, please. I will pick the largest boar for you to ride into battle. Sure. <laughs> uh, I liked it when you said largest, and then not so much when battle. But yes. So much battle. Do we see Moontooth and Ovlov head towards the ball pits? Uh, the bullpens, rather, um, as Pungar, Grank, Kolsch, and Branak keep having the conversation about who to conduct, and Gornak is eventually summoned. Um, I'm going to take my Pungar hat off and put my Gornak hat on, and uh, I will ask uh, Grank, Kolsch, and Branak to have this conversation with Gornak as she, uh, yes, how, how help. Uh, she's just petting her weasel, uh, who is just like thrown around her neck like a shawl, a very small shawl. It is a big orc neck. Um, and she's like, yes, um, I have heard that there was something about blood in water and confusion, and I think the troops would like some clarity about what is about to happen. We, the, the pale fleshlings, just they, we, 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 what are they? What do we do? Well, clearly the omen has been misinterpreted. I think what it really means is that we will be standing in inches of blood because we will be the champions. We must rouse the troops, excite them. Give me something to do, please. I've just been sitting around here doing nothing since the, the warlord died and I just, I just want something to kill just to smash something really hard. 
Um, I oh, that's not what I what what I heard from the uh, well. You know, there were people when they were looking at the water, and there was definitely blood in there. And Omen's Cryer, um, what uh, was what? What did you say? I mean, no, 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 no disrespect, Grank. Uh, it's just um, Kolsch. You know, literally, what Kolsch does is look at the omens. Kolsch, <laughs> she's been uh, rattling bones in a cup, and it's just like, mm -hmm. I, t I tell you what I know. I t I cannot clarify any further. I will say that, Grank, you are trying to uh, influence someone's mind or like change their mind as to what a, a message has been sent out about. Let's yes. try a roll on this. Okay. Um, so orcs in this scene are uh, Branak, Kolsch, and Grank. Um, you are going to roll your your secret die, your black die. You're going to roll your reputation die, your red die. And you are going to roll. Do we have any white die that can apply to the situation? Does your role as a warlord ex bodyguard apply to this particular situation? Um, I think beyond trying to change the um, the omen, like the mm -hmm. interpretation of the omen, but I don't think that would apply to me being a bodyguard. So I'm gonna go with isn't. You know. Aren't they acting against? Yep, I'm just I'm going in order so we can like orc check too, all of the criteria to decide how gotcha. many dice we need. Um, because this yeah, is, so... yes, as Taryn is saying, the next point is you roll an additional white die if you are acting against another orc and you have mm -hmm. more marks on them than they have on you. Oh, which right now does not apply as no marks have been set up yet. No. Um, does anyone yeah. in chat want to give um, a? white die of advantage to Grank to influence Gornak to tell the troops that actually blood and water good I'm going to give it two minutes for the chat to see if any donation comes through um, and if not we will just roll a single black die and a single red die and see how this goes you know maybe blood and water is like the common phrase you know blood is thicker than water and it's like, you know, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb or something like that. I think it's a human expression. Like, we don't like them anyway. So why am I using their words against you? But I'm just <laughs> saying, you know, you guys are my brothers and my you sisters. Are using, you, are, you are using the words of the humans to <laughs> to convince me that the human, that ah, I'm just, ah, oh, oh, Fiesel. She just starts like playing with her weasel called Fiesel. Um, just, oh, Fiesel, we are in such trouble now. I mean, there's uh, nothing wrong with blood. It's normal. Totally biological. <laughs> also, <laughs> we had the saying long before the humans did. Oh, they, they stole it? Forgotten. They, they stole it from us? Oh. Yes. Well, oh, I never knew that. Thank you, Branagh. That is... Oh, well, um... Uh, okay. Uh, I think that is... Enough stalling for time. Um, Grank, give me a single red and a single black die roll. If hey. we get a four or higher, you will get a success. One, one die rolled over a four. One die so I rolled succeed over at a four. cost. Yes, you succeed at a cost. Um, you seem to be swaying the mind of Gornak. She is looking at you, looking at Branak, looking at Kolsch, and there is a moment of confusion. She's not quite sure what to do. She's no longer certain that the rumor that she heard is correct. And she is... How... How would you say this doesn't go exactly as you want it to go, but you are still successful? Um, or I what think... cost is you willing to play to pay to make it go your way? I think... I would be willing to accept two things. Um, one, that the troops are roused to their feet to action, but that they are still afraid. They're just being like, they feel like they have to do this. It's part of their job. Uh, or I will take a mark against, um, I will take a mark against Kolsch for this. And the troops will be raring to go. 
uh, I think I think I will reread that last one, and it will be that Kolsch will take a mark against you because you defied them publicly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So marks are a negative element about your orc. So I think both Kolsch and Brannock will take a mark against you um, because you defied the Omen Scryer in public. Um, but you succeed on convincing the troops. Mm -hmm. You rally the troops. They are still, you are changing their fear into action and changing their fear into anger. And you will rally them and give this speech with both Brannock and Colt being just like, I mean, you kind of just like did the opposite of what we said, but okay. Do um, do I take any marks or the other? Uh, you do not take any marks. People, no. right. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, Brannock and Kolsch. Um, as Grank is giving the speech where uh, Grank has changed the words of the omen, uh, Kolsch, how do you feel about that? And is there anything you would like to do about it? I don't think Kolsch is going to do anything about it, but she's just going to seethe. Just, <sighs> I used to respect you. And now you lead the troops to their death. To find me publicly. I will note this. Brannock, how do you... Your single tear this? run down Grank's face. No, oh, Grank. It's like... Mm. His little bottom lip is quivering. <laughs> oh, Grank. Brannock, how do you react to... You see Kolsch scalding Grank and Grank starting to tear up. So the words were changed to what exactly? How was the it words changed? were changed so the omen was seen as a bad omen that would demoralize the troops, but uh, Grank was able to convince the troops that actually blood in the water, yes, is a bad omen, but that just means we have to be better, we have to be stronger, we have to go and use that fear and fight. Um, I actually don't know that I had really seen that change as that bad of a thing, but... okay. Um, so I actually, I don't know that I would have technically taken the mark there, but. That's fair. Um, yeah, we can say that you, you side with Grank in this. You can. You I am going to go ahead mark. and stand with, yeah, I'm not going to take the mark because. I am. I, I believe in, in the possibility of, of that, you know, I realize that, um, even the best of omen scryings can there's still the factor of interpretation you know so um yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um however grank uh we're gonna have to make you roll to lose some hope because i believe mm -hmm. that you've been hurt a little i definitely have been hurt by this um uh, so roll a d6 and it'll be one to two okay. is a one three to four is a two and five to six is a three. I got a five. So I you lose, lose three, hope. three points of hope as Kolsch's words cut into you. <clears throat> Moontooth <clears throat> and Ovlov. At the bullpens. What's going on, babies? Moontooth. I do not know if you have heard the buzz around the camp. You know me to be clear in my communication and everyone thinks that you are weak and that you are small. But I, I have faith in you. I believe in you. And I think as Avlov like hops up on the backs of two oars, like uh, boars, like wearing them like boots, and he straps them on like 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 water skis, and he's like, "Mount a boar! We will go into battle. I will help you prove how very brave and wrong you are, or right you are in your bravery. You are brave. You are fearsome. You are orc." Oh, I'm going to have to take a moment for myself then. <laughs> <laughs> Moontooth. So, never having felt this way ever before, Moontooth feels like inspired, like nobody's business. And looking up at this, like, 
gigantic, glorious, glistening specimen of like brutal orcness. Um, the <laughs> I feel like, uh, yeah, Ovlov is the, the platorknik uh, ideal of an orc. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Um, so I feel like this is definitely much a sharing a moment. Um, you, if you are successful, you would recover hope equal to D3 plus the sum of marks, but you have full hope. So it is a very lovely moment. It is a very, it's a very hot moment, um, but there is no, no mechanical um, result of this. However, the two of you have not defended the fortress by sharing this moment, which means that as the next <laughs> event is triggered, we will have to add two points to my roll, which means a one of the goblins, uh, part of the sabotage teams. Uh, you have goblins in the camp. Uh, they it's a, it's a small swarm of goblins that operate. They mostly do scouting, recognition, uh, assassination if needed, uh, but mostly just disseminate chaos wherever they go. It, you've just been able to, in a way that humans call herding cats, uh, the orc saying is herding goblins. Um, they are just rollicking around and uh, one of them suddenly just turns and looks at everyone with different big eyes, large toothy grin, and the decides that they're going to go and fuck shit up in the fortress. And you see this one goblin trying to rally the other goblins to go and do things. And they are speaking with voices that you don't recognize as belonging to this goblin, almost as if some enemy magic is corrupting them. Oh, no. Grank, Brannock, and Kolsch, let's begin with you. You see these, <clears throat> this almost like ball of goblins roll by as like a dust bunny, just made of a <laughs> conglomeration of different limbs, very cartoon style. You only see like a foot, an arm, and a leg as this ball rolls by. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm heading towards the buildings. Um, what do you do as you see them roll by? That's the spirit, guys. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna follow them. I'm going. I'm going after them. Right. See what they're up to. <laughs> mm. um, they Maybe. seem to be heading for the catapult section. They seem to be heading directly for the section that holds all of your siege weapons inside this fortress. Or I guess the anti-siege weaponry inside this fortress. Um, and they are rolling over. And you see this one goblin that is currently unnamed. If you would like to name it, donate in the chat. Um, if you'd like to name this goblin. Um, they are heading towards the catapult and they are starting to gnaw on the ropes and tethers and safeties that are holding the catapult together. They are trying to destroy your weaponry in the fort. Hey, listen, if you guys have a bone to pick with someone around here, you got to come to me. All right? No, we don't deal with this destruction of property thing. Oh, that is not is acceptable. <laughs> The one goblin who is just like standing behind, like a whole three feet, three three foot tall, standing, crosses goblin arms, is like, "You will fall before night is over. We shall take over the fortress." Goblins, keep chewing. <laughs> Not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I am going to pretty much um, start basically uh, working to kind of push the goblins off the... I want to just dive in there. Just full on. And elbow start. first. Tusks open. Just going in. Just wrenching goblins off the catapults. I'm going to... Damn see. straight. Let's do some rolling. Let's roll. Uh, roll your red die. You roll your reputation die first. Oh, okay. It's not. Roll your both. secret die next. Oh, okay. I thought and they were rolled simultaneously, but 
Yeah, we All can right. roll them seven sailors, just like to give you one, give you an order for them. Um, and does your roll, do you think, apply in any way to this? Does your beast? I don't know. Do we consider apply? the uh, goblins beasts? Oh. <laughs> Oh, hmm. Let's uh, reveal the underlying philosophy behind Branagh's uh, orc ethics. Uh, goblins <laughs> technically beasts. Um. Well, no, they're <laughs> scouters, and they do carry on conversations. So, yeah, not quite. All right. Okay. Um. However, uh, we've had a number of uh donations. Uh, we have two donations and uh, two advantage directly to Moontooth uh, for anything that Moontooth chooses to do in the next two rolls or even just use two advantages in total um, so we have yeah we have um, either either oh. uh, either Grank gets an advantage or Grank can choose to give advantage to someone else and then uh, we can choose to give someone else another advantage die as well. Grank, would you like to give, or Jesse, I suppose, would you like to give advantage to uh, Branach in this case? Yes, yes I would. Okay, Branach, you roll a extra white die. A extra white die, okay. And then I'm going to say with a six, Branach, you get another extra white die. You get two oh, dice of advantage. Damn, okay. Well, ah, uh, let me just mark down the... So in the scene and... present, we have Grank, Kolsch, and Branach. Oh, us up. Good bye, or good shut up phone. <laughs> um, I thought I had the stupid thing on, do not disturb. Um... <laughs> Sometimes the curse of being a blind streamer. Things like this happen. Okay. It just keeps I... reading things out at you. <laughs> yes. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> so any dice showing four or more. Okay. And let me I have how many white dice? Uh, two say? white one... dice. So two. one red, one black, and two white dice. Okay. I have to... I lost my white die that I had. So I have to reuse my other ones. Thank God for notepad. And oh, those don't count. Okay. Two fives. And my reputation die was a one. Ooh, okay. Well, that is still a success. It is you are perfectly able and capable of removing on just like literally just like wrenching and wrestling away these tiny little if you ever played with like toddlers just like a toddler trying to hold yep. onto something that they don't yep. want to let go of it is very difficult but you are you are a strong orc you are a powerful orc you are able to do this with no problem however your reputation shows in a way your reputation is that you are fearless um how does it complicate the situation Um, I would say maybe that I am, I am not perhaps as cautious as I should be, and maybe one of them, I don't know, Go one of them Finish that does thought. something to me. Finish that thought. Okay. Um, I will say... Just so that we can use this mechanic, I'm going to say that one of the goblins that is wrestled away, that just with your your fearlessness translates into um, carelessness in this situation. You are just like yeah. pulling off these goblins, and one of them gets flung too far away. It is a tiny little three foot goblin. It smashes into one of the buildings. Yeah. It you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> and after the, you hear a, as it splats against the building, this goblin is dead. Yay! Oh! As an unnamed character dies, all three of you present in this scene, I want you to roll a d6. So, Grank, Kolsch, and Branach. I got a five. Uh, four for me. Five. A Single four. D six. Single D six. Is a four. Okay. Um, 
Now, the choice for all of you is, do you think a goblin is a resource or a goblin is an unnamed character? Oh yeah, they're definitely resources. Yeah. Yeah. You all lose the amounts that you rolled in hope. Oh. So you lose four points of hope and five and six points of hope, five points of hope. Yeah. As a resource is lost, as one of this saboteur team is uh, accidentally lethally harmed by uh, Branach trying to save the siege weapons. Um, as you see that this <laughs> uh, Moontooth and Ovlov, you just see this <laughs> <laughs> happening on the other side of the ball pens, and you just hear the clamoring coming from everyone gathering around the catapults and siege weapons. You join the rest of the scene as you see every, you see Branach in the middle just standing with two goblins per hand. Um, what are we doing? What's going on? How How do you deal with this scene? Moontooth and Ovlov. Ovlov is very angry that he did not draw first goblin blood. He <laughs> looks over his shoulder at Moontooth as he stands on top of two wild boars, <laughs> pulsing and thrusting underneath his feet. He raises a huge, huge staff above his head. At the end of the staff is a carved piece of bone in the shape of a crescent moon. And he looks to Moontooth and he says, we will ride and we will destroy. As Avlov like takes off, galloping on the backs of these two boars, he uses hopefully his speech beast speech ability to start like a full on boar stampede with every boar in the boar pits, cleaving <laughs> a path through goblin bodies with his huge bone crescent shafty staffy thing. You're ju using your giant bone shaft to cleave through as your boars thrust and pulse. I, I see. I see how it is. Giant bone shaft. I, I yes. see how it is. Um. <laughs> Moontooth <laughs> ride uh, and very ungracefully Moontooth is uh, okay, I'm <laughs> struggling just to stay on let alone try to get a weapon out to do anything but okay. mostly just still staring directly at Ovlov yep uh, okay. uh, now at the back of Ovlov as he's going you know right. Hate, hate to see him leave, great to see him get run into <laughs> battle. Um, okay, um, I'm going to ask Moontooth to roll um, two dice, and if you want, you can roll two extra white dice, uh, because you have two advantages, um, to stay on the ball. So you're rolling a black die, a red die, and up to two white die. Uh, two and two. Oh, no. Two and two. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> you are not you have as you said you've never been able to ride a boar you've never you've never even been told like you didn't even know the boars were here you had never hid with the boars it's 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 scary there's like there's people who do stuff at the boars um it's you slide the the bristly fur of this creature is just greased and muddy enough that it's just like yeah you just <laughs> the boar keeps going forwards and you stay exactly where you are there's a scooby-doo moment of just <laughs> and you <laughs> fall Heels to yep. Jesus. Yep. Um, and you will fall to the ground and something goes wrong as this boar just slams into the boar in front of him, which is one of the boars that um, Ovlov is riding. Now, oh, Ovlov, yes. as you are trying to deal with this situation, um, yes. using your bony shaft, um, your large bone <laughs> shaft to get rid of the goblins, um, give me a roll. Um, sure. And I will say, as a consequence of the something going wrong from Moontooth's roll, uh, you will have a white die of disadvantage. Okay. But you, I think you only have two dice anyway, so... So I roll a, a one white die of disadvantage and a, a red So roll die, yes. your red die, your black die, and then I will oh. think about how to use a disadvantage on you. Okay. Hmm. 
Um, I I got a four on my red die, mm-hmm. five on my black die, okay. and then got a four on my white die. Okay. Um, I'll say that I will use that four as removing a success. So you still get a success in total, um, okay. but you get it at a cost or you don't get everything you want. And I will give you a choice. You can either res- solve the goblin issue, but make a fool of yourself in the face of everyone else in the scene by slipping off the balls as you do so, or you don't solve a situation, but you stay on the balls. Do you lose face or do you solve the problem? We're going to go with solve the problem. <laughs> I think everyone is going to take a mark on you um, because they see you. you they see brutal Ovlov rushing into battle, which is just, you know, the goblins having a little skirmish as Baranak is just like, Branak is just like pulling them away. You roll in with your giant bone shaft, you start attacking them, and you just slip as this third boar rushes in from behind and just slams into the boar on your left, pulls it out from under your foot, and you just go sideways, flinging sideways, squashing two goblins in the way. Um, the issue has been solved. The point. problem has been solved. The goblin that was being mind controlled by enemy magic is crushed underneath your shoulder, but you are on the floor. And even Moontooth, who was like very um, inspired by you, is just like, oh, just another orc can also fail. Oh. Uh, um, Moontooth. So I would say more so Moontooth is going to know that that was. His <gasps> oh no and it's gonna like more so take it more so, like that was not Ovla that was me bringing down this magnificent like purple <laughs> being and it was entirely my fault that that happened uh, oh. it's gonna rush over um, and like oh, Ovla, oh no oh no Ovla, uh, uh, are, are you okay uh, like tries to like help him up of love is now drenched in goblin blood kind of rolls around in a, a little bit to just like really get that like goblin blood stink all over him and uh and and he looks at at moon tooth and he says of course i am all right i did not want to look so magnificent to detract from your sudden bravery. I think. Um, <laughs> Foolish has been laughing at Ovlov so hard this whole time, just being like, Serves are right for me to show off. <laughs> I read your omens and you look like a dork. <laughs> Keep looking uh, in bloody. It doesn't TV. take omens to determine that. <laughs> oh, well, how how do you take that as as two out of your five companions are jeering at you um particularly from kolsh uh of love like really like his 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 pride is hurt would you say you're hurt a little i would say he's angered okay um embarrassed Roll, sure. roll a d6 for me. Yeah, absolutely. One to two is one, two to three is two. Oh, sorry, uh, three to four is two, and five to six is three. Oh, I got a three on the die, so it's a two. Three on the die, so a two. You lose two points of hope. <sighs> so for the second time today, Moontooth is feeling a very uncharacteristic uh, like surge of confidence to start yelling back at this no not of love's fault Minton's fault no other fault mine oh my great sweet summer child you don't have to take the fall for this he totally fell off the board and it was hilarious oh you may have triggered the event but how he handled it He's rolling around in the goblin stick. It's hilarious. 
You are not responsible for that. We agree to disagree. Ola is bathed in glorious battle blood. As opposed to staring at it in a pool of water. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Fired. I'm on Avlov's side again. <laughs> 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 Hell yeah, that's right, buddy. Oh yeah. Also, um, as... the blood and the tea being spilled. Jeez. <laughs> as this um, scene is playing out, you hear a cry from a distance. You hear just a fire, oh. and. <laughs> arrows start flying towards the fortress from the enemy line and you see most of them just they hit the buildings they hit the um the actual wall and fortifications they hit the watchtower but then you hear gornak scream as she is hit in the shoulder and falls to the ground by an enemy arrow thank you for whoever oh. donated another 25 dollars for another event awesome are they following are they falling like near uh, Moontooth and Orla, Olaf? Uh, they are falling. The, you are behind towards the catapults. These are falling a little bit further ahead. These are more like towards the front of the fort. Um, so like none of you are being affected, but also none of you are currently defending the fort because you're uh, dealing with the goblin issue. I have a question. Yes. We forgot, to, or at least I did, forgot to roll for relationships for uh, Pungar and Gornak. So if anybody else has forgotten to do that, Ooh, Maybe tomorrow. this is how we'll decide how to react to that. Um, Gorna, because it says NP, it says roll yes, for every um, other orc plus NPCs, and now we have two of them. It's true. Um, I think the way that I read including NPCs is NPC orcs, so anyone's that I control. Okay. Um, so this particular Gornak is a named NPC, but not one of the ones that requires a relationship. So you can you can improvise the relationship with Gornak. Okay. But with Pungar, yes. With Pungar, you can definitely roll the relationship. Um, I'm probably going to rush to see if anybody else has been hit by arrows and check on, check on Gornak. I was about to go into battle, but then I took arrow to knee, says one of the orcs close <laughs> to the gate. <laughs> yeah, that'll end your adventuring if I've ever seen an arrow to the knee. <laughs> One arrow, just <laughs> one. One arrow to the knee can be overcome. Gorn is just like, um, if anyone could, like, I'm just, oh, and passes out. Oh, I take the weasel. <laughs> I will look after it. Damn. The okay. I like to look after it to make sure it doesn't get hurt. I'm like sheltering it. And the weasel is trying to weasel its way out of your um, oh. hands and trying to get back onto. Oh, I am hurt Gorn. by that. Oh, roll yeah. a six. As like as a bodyguard, I know how important it is for for vulnerable creatures to be guarded, and mm -hmm. the fact that it doesn't want to be guarded, something bad. I feel like something bad might happen to it because that's what happened with the last warlord. Like he was like, "No, we don't need your help," and then he ran off and did something, and he got hurt. So, what do I have to roll? Uh, roll a d six, and it's one to two is. One, three to four is two, five to six is three. Okay, I lose one hope. No, one come back! <laughs> Winter will, uh, after seeing that uh, of love is is okay, is going to uh, run forward. Um, while they are fearful and not so much battle-focused, they do have a little bit of, like, medicine taking care of people. So I'm going to try to help yeah, try helping Gornak. Um, let's let's roll for it. Let's um, let's roll your dice. Um, if you use both of your advantages already, you don't. You only have your red and black die. If you only have, use I one of them, even... yeah, then you can use up to two white dice on top of your black and red. Uh, so red was five, okay. and black was one. Ooh, that is one success at a cost. And your secret is revealed in part. 
Okay. So everyone in this scene, which is everyone, as you all rushed forward to where Gornak was hit, takes a mark on Moontooth. Hmm. Against someone and on someone, are they're the same thing, yeah, right? Yeah, same thing. Or... Yeah. If you take a mark, it's just like, you, you just mark down that you have something on that orc, and then it's it's against the orc, okay. or like take or gain. Yeah, they're all the same thing. All right, so I have a mark on Moontooth, you say? Yes. Okay. Um, Moontooth, how does your secret reveal itself in this moment? Uh, while I'm trying to minister to Gornak, um, Moontooth is sort of mumbling under their breath, but not realize that they're not really mumbling. They're just talking full volume. Um, and uh, says, uh, oh, must, we need to be better at this so I can protect him. Need to protect him I, before I, I need to tell, but need to protect. You all hear Moontooth as he's just fumbling through, like, he clearly knows what he's doing, but he's just a little too excited, and he just starts spilling out this, like, who is he trying to protect? Like, what does he mean by protecting him? Who is he talking about? And a little something is learned about Moontooth in this moment. <laughs> um, you are able to... You, you know, you dress up Gornak, you um, see that she hasn't lost too much blood, um, but she, she is still a little, little woozy and doesn't quite come to immediately. Um, she is sent over to, one of the elders comes over and like makes sure that she is looked after and sent back to the barracks to rest. Um, and they say, oh, we have heard bad, bad noise, bad rumors from enemy camp. We know that Perhaps this is dawn will be final attack. They will try coming in and take fortress and take gates and take down watchtower before we can spot any more enemy come. How do you suggest we deal with this? Should we send out scouts? Should we send out raiding party? Should we leave and, and defy warlord? Defy Great Khan. What do we do? Branak, Ovlov, Kolsh, Grank, Mundus, we look to you. Um... Not leaving. This is our fort. This is our home. Everything here is ours. We will give nothing but death. Agreed. I say we go out to meet them. Maybe there's a, an area on their approach that we can funnel them through and cause heavy losses. They will have to break through us to get to the fortress. I will exactly. summon the beasts of the forest to stop them where they stand. Can I do that? <laughs> Yes, we can. <laughs> let's let's find out. Um, would you like to roll for that? Would you? Would you want, and like, the, the other bears, beast, the two beast speakers. I want like yeah. bears, wolves, owls to like claw out their eyes. Just like every, like I'm the beast speaker. I want to like exude my pheromonal musk to control <laughs> these animals to do whatever. Just the standing on the gate. Yes. Just like just legs like, akimbo, arms open, just like funk, funk powers activate. Just like, <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> yeah. Putting it out there. Um, I'm going to say, yeah, if Ovlov and Branak, the two beast masters would like to just stand on the gates and just summon the creatures from the forest, both of you roll your red and black die and um, we will roll I think we, we still have an advantage. Um, also, this is a beast speaker. Yeah, game. these are applicable to your roll. So you all both get one white die to begin with. Cool. Oh, all right. Yes. I did really good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's all got all a, the best at a yard. <laughs> I've got a six, a five, and a four. 
A six and five and a, ooh, is the six on a colored die? The six is on my red die, the four is on my black die, the white is on my white die. Okay. Um, so the six on your red die means that your reputation causes problems and you are forced into a choice. You either hurt uh. someone or every orc in the scene gains a mark on you. I either hurt someone? You either hurt someone and still get what you want, or every other orc in the scene gains a mark on you. Um, as your reputation is uh, precedes you a little bit too much. Do I get to choose who accidentally gets hurt? Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry, Kolsch. But you just sit there in your little room with your little pools of water. And Pondering your orb. It must be nice. It must be so nice in your lofty little seer den. And uh, so in doing that, whatever, like, whatever, you know, I don't know. What kind of animals do you keep in your, like, they also get triggered by this, like, musky call to battle. And they chew off a toe. <laughs> no! <laughs> all of the scrying goats and pigeons and all of the, the bones of the animals just, like, coalesce <laughs> back together and just nibble, at, just run, rushing through to join all of the woodland creatures summoned by the two beastmasters, bite a toe off Kolsch's hey, foot. Hey, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not! <laughs> now where um, am I going to put my toe ring? <laughs> okay. Are you hurt a little, or are you hurt, Kolsch? Uh, by... By Oglov? No, not by me. I mean, your toe has just been bitten off, so also I'm that. I got a five. Five on a d6. Um, you lose five hope <gasps> as your scrying animals just Favorite scurry toe. past you. And your toe, <laughs> yes. You can no longer divine uh, the future by stubbing your toe against furniture. <laughs> but on the plus side you have an extra knuckle bone now it's true um Brannock, you rolled a six on your reputation die and then another success um so you are also able to get what you want but your reputation also causes some problems your choice is to either hurt someone or every other orc in the scene gains a mark on you um I will let them take the mark. I feel the what happens narratively is that as these animals rush past and bite Kolsch's toe off, everyone thinks that both you and Ovlov caused this. But exactly. It's in fact just Ovlov who did it, but you you get the blame. You get part of the I blame get I that. get I get the blame partially because yeah, um uh I am as devout in it as as of love is, and so in the process, it uh, yeah, somebody somebody had already called me out, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it fits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Pungar, as this happens, and sees Kolsch's toe being bitten off, he scrambles and goes look for the toe, and he goes like finds it and just like. <laughs> Like tries cleaning it a little bit, just like spits on it and rolls it around in his hands, <laughs> um, and brings it back to um, Kolsch and just like sidles up to her and goes, um, "If if you do you, you want to try and, and mend this, maybe we can go to the barracks where Gordnak is and um, try, you know, uh, making a connection um, between with the toe and the foot. I mean, obviously nothing else, no other, no ulterior motive." Kolsch is going to smack the toe out of his hands. <laughs> Be gone from my sight. I'm scrambling around on the floor. I will go tend to Gornak. You will stay here. <laughs> okay. Wow. Ouch. Um, uh, Pungar is going to roll a d6 and take all of that hope off. That's a six. <laughs> Pungar is so hurt oh, by this. Emotional <laughs> Sorry, guys. 
Wow. 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 Um, is anyone... Okay, so before the next event is triggered, because we have a donation, like we have the second 25... Well, the fourth $25 donation to Treya, um, does anyone choose not to be defending the fortress? Um, Kolsch, you just mentioned that you're going to go and check in on Gornak. Are you going to be spending that time with Gornak, meaning that you're not defending the fortress technically? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is anyone else trying to share a moment with any other orc, or are you all going to be um, witnessing as the musk of Ovalov and Branak combined summons the woodland creatures against the enemy camp? I mean, in the sharing with uh, Branak, Ovalov definitely like feels this sort of like sibling warmth and love that maybe all love doesn't always get back that apparently all love does not get back because uh Brannock has already tried to like put all love down um but all love like thinks Brannock is like super fucking cool and so the fact that they're just up there like stinking and like calling beast of the wild to like tear up our enemies it feels like old times it feels right Branagh how do you how do you feel in this moment as Ovlov is just like standing t-pose on the gates and just like <laughs> looks over to you with like a solemn nod and and like respect and glint, glint in his eyes which is like yeah white man biting lower lip style <laughs> uh, white man does, biting lower lip okay how does Branagh um, feel in that um I think I don't know it's like this is the one space where we do kind of connect like a lot of times in orc to orc relations Um. Yes. <laughs> Brannock doesn't really get of love, but here, yeah, I mean, we're. This is our thing. This is our thing. Like. This is your thing. This is why we don't really hang out a lot outside of be speaking, because yeah. Um. Oh. <laughs> um. I will say this is definitely a successful moment that's been shared. Um, you both recover hope equal to... Um, you're going to take uh, however many marks you have on each other. Plus two. Oh, cool. Okay. So however many marks you have on each other summed, plus two is how much hope the two of you regain in this moment shared upon the Dope. ramparts. Uh, the marks don't disappear. You just you still have them. It's just they are now used to recover hope. Um, Moontooth and Grank, what are you up to? Do you choose to defend the fortress? Do you um, help Pungar get up again from the floor where he is still looking for the toe that was sna smacked out of his hand? Uh, yeah, Kolsch, feel bad about it. <laughs> I'm um, I'm gonna follow Kolsch actually uh, okay. to wherever um, she is going. Kolsch is going to see Gornak. Where they the are barracks. going? Uh, is the watchtower inside the fortress, or is it outside? The watchtower is inside the fortress. The watchtower is the tallest building inside the fortress. Um, it is at the center of the fort itself. Okay. Um. With a uh, like long lingering glance and a final like with uh, <laughs> deep inhale, uh, Moontooth is gonna head to the watchtower to see if there can be any like fortification or something that's done there okay. to make sure it doesn't go down. Okay, um, so uh, Kolsch. Oh, Grank and Kolsch, what is uh, uh, Grank? What is your intention? I would like to try to share a moment with Kolsch. Um, Thought twist. 
So tell me what you're doing and then I will just uh, come in awkwardly. <laughs> awkwardly? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Awkward. yes. Awkward. We're all legally obliged to give him ten dollars for this. <laughs> so Please, everyone, just like I will match. I will match those ten dollars immediately. <laughs> Can we just sell T-shirts that say "awkward" on them? Please. I know, Let's right? Well, we have to get an artist money. to do it and to make it, and then a T-shirt printing place to print them. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can yeah. do that. Let's do that. Jackets, like pink lady, um, just awkward. Right? Awkward. Let's 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 resolve <laughs> this scene, name. Uh, and then we can take a quick break, uh, and we'll be back. Uh, but let's resolve this scene as Kolsch. What are you doing as you head to the barracks to check in on Gornak and see how she's doing? Uh, Kolsch is going to make sure Gornak is is actually okay because it looked like Moontooth was struggling there, and. She's going to <laughs> reprimand Gornak because she warned her. And she did not heed the warning. I told you blood and water is bad, and you just listened to that guy. And did you not just... stand there? You were going to get hurt? Oh my, I, I just, it, it was so convincing when he said the thing, and I just didn't know. And, and where's Fiesel? Where's Fiesel? Uh-huh. I'm going to come in at that point with the the weasel named Fiesel like crawling in my sleeve and like across my chest and down and out the other sleeve like just like does the wave (laughs) that's how I come into the room (laughs) just waves into the room as Fiesel just erupts out of the sleeve of the tunic jumps onto Gornak and there's just like little moment of like Weasel uh, Fiesel the Weasel and Gornak um, having a reunion um, after she lost him in that fall. Uh, so, uh, uh, how, how's it going? Um, basically, I wanted to apologize for, um, you know, changing how you say omens. And it's just because, like, I worry that something bad is going to happen to you. And I don't want that to happen, like, ever. Um, and so I think that if something bad were to happen, uh, that I would never forgive myself so I tried to get everybody to leave so that we could run away together. That was my plan. And I just I just feel like I have to tell you this because um, like we all might be dead tomorrow and you know how like you just, you feel a certain way when, when bad things are happening that you just have to let people know how you feel. That's how I feel. So anyway, I'm gonna go because I'm just I'm just talking awkwardly and um <laughs> someone donated ten dollars for awkwardly. Yes. <laughs> well, she's, she's been, like chewing herbs and putting it where her toe used to be, just listening to this, being like Grank is like grinding his toe into the ground, you know, like looking down, like do 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 He's doing this. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice that he has a toe to grind, isn't it? I'm jealous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> so she's spitting out the herbs, putting it on her toe, being like, I respect that you're so in tune with your emotions. To feel something bad coming and to act on it is something I can't see for the rest of the orcs in here. Unfortunately, I can't run away tonight. I have to stay and defend the fortress. Bones have told me as much. Another tear falls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grank, are you hurt a little or are you hurt a lot? Um, or? I mean, she said not tonight, so oh, okay, that is okay, inspiring okay. me to last another day, but I am hurt a little. So, okay. yes. Yep, so one to two is one, three to four is two. Five to six is three. Okay, so I take three hope away from my total. Another three hope? Yeah. You're basically yeah. using the D6 as a modified D3. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Smart. Um, okay. Um, 
uh, we will trigger the next event and then we will take a break. Um, and because this is something that um, Moontooth is going to notice um, as our two beast masters are currently just musking away um, <laughs> king of the world, Jack, king of the world moment, but with both of them being uh, Rose. Um, Moontooth, you notice a small group of orcs leaving from the fortress, clearly overheard the rumor of sabotage, and one of the goblins was mind-controlled, and someone is going to come and destroy the watchtower. You see them just, and you hear this scream in orcish of, as this rush of like maybe five orcs run away on what is clearly a suicidal mission towards the enemy lines and that is where we're going to take a break and we will be back um just as a <laughs> reminder we are playing big gay orcs um you can donate uh to the game all donations go to rainbow rainbow refugee through raw cat reads uh we are raising um twenty five thousand dollars total uh currently working on a smaller section of that but we have currently reached um over 1580 last i checked it's probably a little bit higher than that um you can donate ten dollars to this game specifically to give advantage to one player um, you can donate $25 to trigger an event. Uh, we are about to resolve our fourth event in a second. Uh, and you can donate $50 to create and name an NPC. Um, Trisha is also posting this in the Twitch chat. Um, you can take a look there, and then the donation link will appear shortly as well. Um, last we left off, um, we had spieling, spielings being filled, we had feelings being spilled, we had toes being bitten, we had mask being um, exuded, secreted. Um, we had... Um, I think in this case it would be exuded because... It is exuded. There's, no, there's no secretion here. The, the mask was not a secret. Um, it was very, very obvious to everyone uh, where Speak it was coming from. Speak yourself, Brannick. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Um, moments have been had uh, tender moments have been shared and a lot of refusals um, a lot of very um, these these orcs are not great like maybe very in touch with their feelings but not in touch with each other uh, we'll see how the night goes on um, the last thing that Moontooth, our fearful orc, our fearful ex-bodyguard orc, uh, spotted from the watchtower was a small troop of uh, what is clearly a suicidal mission of orcs rushing towards the enemy lines to the call of Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Mundus. Yeah, already. Uh, Moontooth is definitely not joining. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not high on their list of things to do. Um, they <laughs> uh, they're going to shout some encouragement uh, and wish them the best. So they're going to go. <laughs> brothers. <laughs> it's like, um, yeah, well done. You have my whole support. <laughs> Do you like run halfway with them and then duck down an alley? Like, <laughs> my original plan was to try to go like help secure the watchtower. So I will continue on that. I'm just going to let them also. Maybe they'll save the day. You don't know. I mean, Maybe they they'll save the day. Maybe they're they're leading out. Um, I have hope. Um, so does Moontooth do anything to alert anyone else in the fortress about this, other than just shouting like "Yay"? <laughs> uh, actually, so actually, uh, I will follow just make just to make sure that the door that they go out of closes again and is locked. <laughs> It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay come back soon. <laughs> no humans can like sneak their way in. Okay. Um, yeah, no, the the they did just leave through the main gate. There is clearly like it's this is clearly the people who were set to guard the main gate, and they just decided, like hearing the rumors that the uh the humans were going to come and attack. 
they just decided to just take matters in their own hands and rush off. The main gate is still open. You are able to go there and just like start closing it. Um, I'm going to say you don't need to roll for this. It is it is a gate. It is big. It is strong, but you are able to like pull it close. Um, yeah, I'm careful, I think but I can close it is doors. built to be. Yeah, You're it is built strong, to be closed. Yeah, work. yeah. Um, highly capable. <laughs> highly capable at closing doors. Um, closing many doors. Yeah, it's opening them. <laughs> eh, debatable. Um, but uh, Ovlov and Branak, you both see this this um, troop platoon, a uh, small group, so small scouting party of just like what? launching themselves. Like there's there's a long way away between the fort and the actual beginning of the enemy lines, and they're just sprinting. They have no, they understand nothing about like preserving energy and stamina. They're just belting, belting down the field, trying to reach the enemy camp. Uh, just as the two of you are still like t posing on the uh, ramparts above the gate. Wow. Of love would like to clear the path for them as much as possible by commanding these like hordes, packs of wolves and bears and like owls flying into enemy camps, plucking out their eyes, like. We're we're just like full, just like like stinking it up, trying to summon animals to clear a path enough for these brave, fucking awesome orcs to <laughs> go and kill some baddies. Yeah, to give me a fortress. Give me give me a a red, a black, and a white die roll because you're you are a beast master and you are still using your beasts beast to help master. them. The, the oh, beast no. master. Indeed. Okay, so I got a red six. Okay. I got a black six. Okay. And I got a white one. Okay, that's still two successes. Okay, good. Um, the wolves and beasts, like they clear the path for this um small group to launch themselves. Are there any Canada geese in the um animals that you summon? Absolutely. When I was a little kid, I thought Canadian bacon was just the cross section of a Canadian goose's neck because it's round and like the same. Yeah. Anyway, continuing. There's this howling and growling and then just like this <laughs> as this small Canadian trappel. geese are assholes. We They're will be victorious. Nice birds. Yeah. Yeah. Canadian geese in V formation, just like like Find right me. up into that trailer Find however, me. however <laughs> your secret shows in some way how does your secret show so when in the midst of just like you know like eyes rolled back commanding this like army of beasts to attack our villains at one point you see a moment where Ovlov is a little distracted and he takes a glance and he makes sure that um that Branak is okay and then he scans the crowd mm -hmm. to find Moontooth and he just sort of glances at him in all of this like rage and brutality, he just glances at Moontooth and maybe discovers, just has a moment where he never considered something before. And that maybe, maybe this is, okay. this is, this is Ovlov's chance. Yeah. Uh, Branak and Moontooth, uh, you gain a mark on uh, Ovlov. Um, however, this was your black die. Your red die, what is a problem that is caused by your brutal reputation in this scene? And does it hurt someone, or do you give everyone a mark again? Um, so a problem that arises that maybe, maybe of love is not just the brutal bloodthirsty beast that everyone perceives him to be that maybe he has 
what are those things called feelings he has feelings <laughs> and well played. and that could potentially be exploited against him okay i think in that case um branak and Muntus gain another mark on all of so no one gets hurt but something is revealed about all of maybe brutality is mask to cover feeling <laughs> um, Branak, um, what are you doing as you see this small platoon of tiny, of well, not tiny orcs, but this um, pretty large orcs that just like rushing towards enemy lines and uh, being aided by uh, fantasy Canadian geese and wolves? And well, a specialty of Branak's is, I mean, beast speaker, yeah, in general, but a specialty is, um is in fact the avian kind mm -hmm. and oh. especially uh ravens okay. and Branach is sending a um a murderous crows um <laughs> whatever the equivalent of ravens to um peck the eyes of the defenders of the enemy <sighs> camp okay to kind of keep them focused or keep them you know distracted and and, and sort of block their view um to kind of help give this troop um the better element of surprise yeah. if you will yeah uh, and so make it harder for the space for them they're rushing through the field and just this mm -hmm. flock of ravens just like descends upon the enemy lines and tries and, and is is basically giving them hell and yeah. blinding them with their pecking um beaks and gouging talons and so and forth like, I thought I thought Of Love was the brutal one because this is this is pretty nasty. <laughs> these are enemy, okay? These yeah, are this, these this is are an enemy. You're right, uh, but let's see how skin. successful you so, are. Roll me. I mean, that's uh, a, different. That's, that's roll a me different. A black, thing a red, and a white die. And I actually uh, found my white die, which is thank you, beautiful. Colin. An, an unkindness of ravens, and these ravens are very unkind. These ravens are a fuck you of ravens. <laughs> a fuck you of ravens. Yes. <laughs> They are indeed a fuck you of ravens. Um, and let me just notate these before I forget them. Um, so, three of these. Okay. So anything above a four is a success. And a four and a six. Four and, and a, six. Is that... a two. So, okay, yeah. is that six on your black die? Um, that is on my black die indeed. That is on your black die. Okay, so the the ravens do descend and they do start pecking uh, at the eyes of the enemies, and you clear the path for this. Maybe not a suicidal mission as it looked initially, but your secret shows in some way and Ovlov and Moontooth are made privy to it. What happens? What is shown in this moment? There is almost a... Hmm. How would this show? Um, this is an interesting one. <laughs> so... Um... The... Ah... Uh, there is almost a there's a very contemplated logical sort of pattern to the ravens like they're they're, they're not, very they're not going randomly they're not acting on instinct they are following a very specific pattern Yes, yeah. the, the pattern is very carefully thought out and um, considered. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I, I, I know exactly what you're referring to here. Well done. It's well played on that particular secret. Um, but yes, Moontooth. That was and, a tough one. <laughs> it is. Uh, Moontooth and Ovlov, uh, you gain a mark on Branak. Oh. As you realize that not as unthinking and instinctive as an orc as you thought, maybe there is mm. more to this orc that meets the eye. Bah, 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 bah. Um, okay. <laughs> We are, this mission will continue and you will see these, um, you will wait to hear back from the small group of orcs that have uh, tried attacking the enemy lines. Um, if anyone would like to trigger a ne next event, uh, feel free to donate $50, uh, $25 and we will roll for another event to happen. But in the meantime, let's go check in on uh, Gornak, our NPC and her weasel feasel. And um, um, Grank and Kolsch, who are having, well, we're trying to have a moment, uh, but uh, we're shut down very, very quickly. Um, uh, Grank, Dear how... Diary, <laughs> today is Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Kolsch said that there was a chance. And <laughs> If as long as there's a chance, I'm I'm not gonna give up on her. This might be my last entry. Oh, oh she's looking this way. Gotta go. Okay, bye. What are you What are you writing? <laughs> oh, it's just um, I like to to you know write down stuff that happens as if it was like I was writing to a friend, but I don't um. I don't really have that many, so I just sort of keep them in this book and maybe i could leave it to somebody who i consider a friend like like maybe i don't know uh maybe moon tooth or or of love wants it when i'm gone you know i just i approach life as like in a fearful way i, I like to express my emotions freely huh Kolsch is just like this completely foreign concept. <laughs> <laughs> Feelings are dumb. That's that's cool that you learned to write. I never got into all of that. I just read tea leaves, but that's cool. I think it's really cool that you can read things that aren't words. <laughs> <laughs> Like How it's hard enough it? to read words to also be able to read things that are not words. <laughs> is Gornak is she she's just hanging out watching all this go down? Uh Gornak is just like, I'm not here, 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 I'm not here. My shoulder really hurts from the arrow I took, but I'm gonna leave these two to have whatever it is that's going on. <laughs> Fiesel, let's go. And she like oh, tries hey, rolling hey, off her and falls onto the ground like mm, really hurts. <laughs> Cool, she's probably gonna take her up under the arm if it's the one that's hurt or not, but she's gonna try and rouse her to her feet and get back out there. Um I think I think that was technically a moment. Even if it was a weird one, but it was definitely a moment was shared um, as Kolsch thawed a little bit to Grank. Um, you both recover hope uh, equals two. Uh, the sum of the marks you have on each other. I have one on Grank. How many do you have on Kolsch, Grank? None so far. Zero, so one plus. You recover three hope each. Oh, I feel lighter. Like I got that off my chest, you know? Yeah, this is good. good. Okay. Good. It's good to be lighter on your feet, especially when you're going to go fight. Don't mention the feet. It's <laughs> <laughs> Gornak limping out of the, uh, holding her shoulder with Fiesel, trying to like burrow into um, her robes as she heads back out and bumps into Pungar who is on his way with his like still holding the toe um, <laughs> and just like has seen all of this and is just like hmm. <laughs> I have no chance 
yeah, Kosh fully rolls her eyes and just barges past him. Okay, that, that was going to be hurt a little. This is hurt. Actually, no. I think he's going to feel this as betrayal. This is going to be like full on. Final. Oh, um, which means he is going to lose d6 plus marks on Kolsch, which of which he has none. Uh, he's going to lose a whole other six points of hope. Mm -hmm. Um. And he's going to head over to uh, the main gate, uh, just like take <laughs> take the longest route around that will not bump into Kolsch, um, all the way over to Moon Tooth, and say, "Hey, um, look, I know I, I get a little short with you sometimes. Um, it's just, you know, you, you were kind of there when when the warlord was killed, and I feel like maybe I I I could have been more supportive of you." Um, do you think we need better leadership in this place? I feel like the hierarchy just hasn't settled yet. We're all doing our own thing. I think we should push for like getting a new warlord before we get into battle. I don't know. What do you think, Lindus? You, I, I've never seen you like I've seen you today. You've you've really come into your orcishness today. Well, today has been a day, but I definitely don't think that I, if you're implying that I should be the warlord, that's a bad choice. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, your words, not mine. Um, maybe I could be the new warlord. If you don't want to be, like, only if you don't want to be, maybe I could, you know, take it for you. Sure. Warlords should have all their toes. I have an extra one. <laughs> Is it lucky? I mean, it depends on how you look at it. I don't know if it's the foot that was unlucky by Lee. Like, the toe is intact. The foot isn't. I would... I, sure, it's a lucky toe. Let's go with that. Hmm. Maybe Kolsch can read the toe and guide you. We, uh, we should... Uh, Ixnay on the Olshke. Don't don't what mention you, it. What are you saying? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, just don't mention it to Kolsch. I feel like she has a lot on her plate already. Like she's she had to think on her feet a lot. No, don't say feet. Don't say feet. She's <laughs> had to improvise a lot today. Um, okay. If I were to run for warlord with the elders, would you support my campaign? Candidacy? Uh, I feel like we should survive tonight before we do campaigns. Okay, so okay, so you don't think we need new leadership? Okay, fine. Oh, just yeah. Okay, I was right about you. You are frustrating, and I'm just gonna storm off. Ooh, Brandy um, pants. That's gonna hurt. A little? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, roll a d6. Five. That is three points of hope that you lose. Okay. All of that bravery that Ovlov has been filling you with, um, all of that newfound confidence is just diminished a little bit by this interaction. Uh, I don't think that is sharing a moment because that was a shitty moment. <laughs> Um, okay, um, Branak and Ovlov, you eventually, uh, someone that just pulls you off the walls and it's just like, we, we, you can come down now. It's, it's fine. We will wait for, to see what the scouting party has done. Um, just, can you, can you please come down now? Why? There are no more beasts to send. You've, you've emptied the woods. The woods are empty. 
just... And the boars are getting a little upset. Send the boars. No, Let we keep see. the boars. <laughs> Why? Because they're livestock? You're the only one who rides them into battle, man. <laughs> they're <laughs> livestock of death. Why do not coordinate these ravens? No, 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 no. They are livestock, not death. There's no no death involved. They we keep them alive. They give us milk. <laughs> boar cheese. Wait, I thought boars were usually male pigs. Maybe I <laughs> these know. ones are fantasy boars. You, you, you just don't ask, okay? You don't want to know, okay? You can okay. Know them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Let me show you how that works. Um, <laughs> Ooh, sharing a moment. Um, so yeah, um, I'll go to Boris with you, um, uh, Sure, sure, we, sure, we can. Tell me how to get milk, Daddy. We can <laughs> go to the Boris, and I will show you how to milk them. Sploosh again. Yes. <laughs> Um, we okay. spend a lot of time in the boar pits. Uh, before we cut to that scene, um, Brannock, um, as you are also asked to leave the ramparts, as you are still piloting these ravens, um, you are um, Gornak, um, Fiesel the Weasel's mom, comes up to you and says, that was, I saw what you did. That was really good. Um, like, how... I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I just think you're really cool. That, that's it. That's uh, and she just like limps away, holding her shoulder. That's still not fully fixed. Um, but she, she's feeling a little better. Um. And what are Brannock, Grank, and Kolsch doing as Ovlo and Moontooth walk towards the ball pens again? <laughs> um. Well. Brannock is wary to Brannock is is going to make sure that if they do come down that they're going to make sure that the uh and and let up because at this point you know it's a coordinated there's a lot of coordination in what they're doing mm-hmm. and you know, of course, their concern is if they just let up without properly dispersing the uh, their 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 unkindness of ravens. Mm-hmm. That yeah, fuck the, you of ravens. The fuck you of ravens. Yes, <laughs> that the fuck you of ravens is going to fuck you all over them. Uh, That's fair. all over. You know, and it is not going to properly disperse. So. Um, and if, if the troop is still at it, um, already then, um, that, uh, you know, they're gonna make sure this, this, this fuck you is still coordinated and we'll, we'll probably come down once there is no more fuck youing to be done. Okay. Uh, in that case, give me um, a, sp- a final roll. So like another red, black, and white die to uh, control the ravens until they are no longer needed. To uh, complete the fuck you process? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> here we go. One final fuck you! He- here it is. The fuckening. <laughs> the fuckening. <laughs> the awkward fuckening. <laughs> there we go. Um, as my dice decide to go flying, I really need to find the cup that I had for these. Note to self for next time I need them. Okay, here we go. Coordinating dice. Okay. That is a... Ah. Oh. A four, I got a four on the, four on the rep, a six on the secret, and a six on the white. 
Okay, that is a full success. Um, all of the ravens are, they peck as much as they can peck. They fly back. You hear the cawing of them as they swirl back into the sky and start dispersing and heading towards different um, rockeries and roosteries and uh, treetops where they can. Um, but every other orc in the scene, that is Grank and Kolsch, um, will take a mark on you as your secret shows in some other way. Maybe the caution that you are showing, maybe- the, Yeah, that's yeah. it. The the caution that I'm showing, making sure that they they all disperse properly um, and, and in, in carefully, you know, assessing the situation, I'm not just, taking action here i'm i'm carefully assessing coordinating you know the uh the exit and positions of these ravens um yeah this is what grank and Kolsch see is like this very careful this very one might say intellectual way <laughs> of dealing with this um <laughs> If one were to choose a random word from a list um, <laughs> of six, oh. <laughs> that might be a word that might be chosen. Um, <laughs> There's many hypotenuses involved. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of In triangulation. Fact, yes. There's like some like very high calculate, very high level calculation <laughs> happening here. Um, the, the small orc group makes its way back. Uh, within the next 20 to 30 minutes, and they bring with them an enemy scout. Uh, they bring them to the gate, um, but this will be happening. Well, so we'll come back to Grank, Kolsch, and Branach. What is happening at the bullpens? What's going on, guys? <laughs> Moontooth, uh, why do you keep bringing me back to this pig pen, to these orc pits? Oh, love. I have watched you for a long time. You are strong and fearsome, but you also have great care for boars. When young, when pregnant, you are sweet to them. Um, so I was wondering in case this is our last night and we die in glorious battle, um, could I sing song of my heart to you? Um, of love. Uh, says the boars, they bring us food, they bring us milk, but I think that they can bring us so much more. Much the way that I see that you can also bring us so much more. I would like to hear your song. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, uh, Moontooth is going to grab one of, of Love's really just like gigantic hands here. And hold it kind of like here. And oh, of love, you are very hot. <laughs> Make my heart tie in a knot. Up upon your trusty boar makes me want to be your whore. <laughs> of love, you are very hot. Won't you put it in my slot? <laughs> incredible oh my lord <laughs> incredible that was ah oh. um i think we're gonna we're gonna fade to black and that's <laughs> whatever happens i'm saying something about loosening is not that <laughs> is definitely yeah. part of yep, the conversation yep there's like it was incredible um there's going I, I think like there's a couple of boars that just have a bit of a shocked look out in the morning after um, <laughs> <laughs> just like the, very like the breath just like um, <laughs> that is lovely um how many marks um do you have on each other 
Um, I have three. You have three on all um, of. Yeah. I have one. Okay, on so that is four. So you recover a total of uh, seven hope each. All right. And I'm back to full. Can we go over? Uh, no, you go back hope? to 20. You go back to 20. Okay. I'm so full of hope. So so full of hope. I'm so full of hope. It's just spilling out. <laughs> I was everywhere. I was waiting for that moment. Uh, it happened. Um, uh, Moontooth looks at uh, looks gives a look full of love to of love. <laughs> over over your shoulder as your face is planted in the mud right now. <laughs> I said we fade to black. I said yeah. we fade right. to yeah. black. <laughs> um, oh, Grank, wow. Kolsch, and Brannock. That, that was that was incredible. Um uh, but Grank, Kolsch, and Brannock. Um the this human scout, mm. this barely 18-year-old human, um dirty blonde hair, scraggly. Um, still some spots of acne on his face. There's like the beginning of some like bum fluff on the upper lip. And it's like, um, I, I please don't kill me. I I was just I I'm just with the I was scouting and I was supposed to see we had I please don't please don't hurt me. You we're supposed to see what? Um, I shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> well, you uh, have said it, and I think you should finish your sentence. <laughs> Um, I, we were, we, so, someone said that the goblins were helping us with the sabotage and then we didn't see the results of the sabotage, so I had to come and check and see what had happened, and if you still had the weapons, um, then, yeah, because when we, when we, nope, nope, don't, nope, not gonna say that, not gonna say that. Because when we... Mm, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that like starts like shutting himself up and shaking his head like mm -mm. am i there um we... Colt, grank and brannock are all here i rip out a page from my diary and i give it to him sometimes it's hard to say words out loud but you can write them down He's like crying because he totally <laughs> understands. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Um, and this kid is confused. Like, what torture mess me method is this? Like, what 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 do you want me to do with this? Um, right. I I I don't know how to write. Oh, that, that's okay. Um, my friend. Um. Kolsch has like supplies that you could make a picture out of and maybe we could decide together what the picture means. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> takes out like a scorched bone and hands it to the kid with all the, the menace she can manage. <laughs> um, Okay, so Brannock is kind of like going for the intimidation and Grank and Kolsch are going for the, come on, express yourself, express yourself. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to like turn this into a role of some kind to see, that, let's do it like a contested role, if you will. Um, okay. uh, Brannock, roll your red and black and Grank and Kolsch also roll your uh, red and black. Um, if you think that Grank or Kolsch, mm, I think Grank might be the one with the best argument for using the role <laughs> but oh, oh actually um sam um has been donated an advantage die so oh, sam heck. can roll an extra white die Great. all right um, as this is being wrote, remember you can donate to give our players advantage uh, ten dollars will give them Ooh. a dice of advantage uh, 25 dollars will trigger a next event in our fortress and $50 will create a name, an NPC. Want to give a name to this kid from the enemy lines? Donate uh, $50 and give him a name. Uh, Grank, what was that? Uh, I have two failures. Either of them are one? Nope. No, okay. Um, Kolsch. 
I have uh, six on my red, a six on my black, a one on my white. Oh no, I lost there. <clears throat> that is two successes. Um, Branach, what do you have? I have one six on my, oh crap, that's a six on my red. Mm -hmm. Um, And a three on my black. Okay. Um, I think so out of this, Kolsch is the one that is able to um, like convince the kid to do the drawing. <laughs> um, the intimidation doesn't work quite as much as you would think, Branach. And I realize that we have lost Eric. Um, there is, I am split between two screens right now, which looks a little weird. I'm sure uh, the disembodied voice of te technology will um, fix this in a second. Um, Branach, how does your reputation cause a problem in this situation? Um, in my, perhaps it's a little overkill, my fearless bluster, if you will, kind of is seen as such and therefore is not really taken as, you know, because it's seen as, it's seen through as bluster, basically. Okay. Um, Grank and Kolsch, you gain a mark on Branach. I feel like there's no, there's no hurting of anyone in this case. It's just a... <clears throat> um, and then Kolsch, you rolled... Oh, okay, we go. Eric's back. Uh, Kolsch, you said you had a six on both the red and black, right? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so how does your reputation cause a problem in this scene? You can either hurt someone or every other orc in the scene gains a mark on you. Okay. I'll let the orcs take a mark on me. Okay. So Branach and Grank, you take a mark on Kolsch. Uh, Moontooth and Ovlov, you are still at the ball pens. Damn right we are. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and how does, your, how does your reputation um, what like what is it that is causing the problem with your reputation at this point? I think that Kolsch is going to be maybe a little too wary of this kid. She's not had much interaction with humans, so she like is very cautious to not let his hand touch her hand when she's passing the bone. Okay. Um, and what is it about your secret that is revealed? Also giving Grank and Branick another mark on you. I think you guys would see a couple hearts carved into the bone that she hands the kid. You. Um, I'm like, and this is my favorite dead body. And this is my, <laughs> and this one is my cute little corpse. Um, Got a heart on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, uh, Grank, uh, remind me of what your results were. Um, a three and a three. A three and a three. So, yeah, mm -hmm. two failures. Um, okay. Um, something goes wrong as this scene is happening, um, as a lot about Kolsch is being learned by Grank and Branach. There is a sudden, you hear the same voice, like, Fire! and you hear the of catapults launching and you see the rest of the party that didn't make it back their orc corpses are being flung at the fortress from behind the enemy lines and they're just landing in the middle one falls by the ball pens one falls slams straight into the watchtower and one of them falls in front of the gate on the outside as three orc corpses are launched by the evil humans that are 
currently laying siege to you. Uh, let's uh, let's let's do some hope losing. Um, yeah, I would say that that the that deeply hurts Grank yeah. seeing unnecessarily unnecessary loss of life to him like all life is precious in a way that like everybody has value and so even like seeing a dead goblin affected him Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so seeing an orc would be even worse let's uh let's have everyone roll a d6 and whatever you roll is how much hope you lose i lost that's all of us Dude. That's everyone because yes, it was visible to everyone as this happened. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Grank, how much hope did you lose? Five. Kolsh? Two. <clears throat> Moontooth? Three. Ovlov? Also lost three because, like, we're like, you know. Yeah, you're very close right now. Brandon? Super vibing. <laughs> Two. Two, okay. Uh, As well for me. Pungar also lost two. Uh, Pungar is not doing well. Pungar is uh, just kind of like wandering aimlessly right now. Um, things are a little getting a little too um, too real out here. Uh, even though he did try and claim that he wants to bid for Warlord, uh, maybe he doesn't have the stamina for it <laughs> or the the wits about him. Um, but yeah, these three corpses are flung as this kid takes advantage of the situation to scramble away and make his way towards the gate. I'm going to chase after him. He just bolt immediately after him. Yeah. Um, what are you going to do if you catch him? I want to... My goal is at this point to keep him from getting back to his people because I don't want him telling nobody nothing. Okay. Uh, roll... Do you think you would use your beast speaker role for this in any way? I mean, in the sense that there is, in all beings, there is a beast element. You know, we we all have. Okay, okay. I, I, uh, respect, I'm, I'm gonna, I respect I'm the hustle. That, yeah. <laughs> I respect the hustle of roll a black, a red, and a white. So I am, I am kind of going on his core nature as a living being, basically. Yep. Um, you know. Uh, Grant and Kolsch, what are you doing in the same situation as you see uh, Branach just, like, launch after this kid? Kolsch is probably pretty close behind being like, that's my favorite bone! <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, so Branek, what is? Oh, sorry, Grank, what are you doing? And then Branek, tell me what you got as results. Oh, yeah, I don't. Um, I don't think that. Like, if we were under attack by catapults, mm -hmm. I think that Grank would be concerned about. Um, Kolsch at the most, and so okay. is is just chasing after her at this point. Doesn't okay. really care. Uh, if the kid Benny gets Hill away, theme starts playing in the background of just like kids sprinting, Barrack sprinting, Kolsch sprinting, Grant sprinting behind Kolsch. <laughs> um, Branek, what and did you get? Five, one, and six. Um, is the one or the six on a red the or a black die? One is on a black die. That's going to be interesting. Okay. Um, uh, we can say you know it's the same thing like it, it's you take a very calculated approach of like how like the angle that you take you don't just like rush after the kid and tackle you go like just bounce off the wall and make sure you cut him off before he can reach the gate exactly yeah parkour parkour <laughs> but parkour. Parkour. very 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 uh calculated <laughs> parkour and definitely chosen yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so Grant and Kolsch, you take a mark on um Branach. Um Kolsch, um also as you're sprinting behind, also give me a red and black roll. Right. Um and 
Grank, you can also give me a red and black roll, and I will allow you a white die, Grank, because okay. as an ex-bodyguard, you are concerned for the well-being of another orc right now. Yes. Kolsch, Three's what'd you get? across the board. Hmm? Threes across the board. Threes across the board. You, uh, you just miss Branak entirely as, as Branak just sprints ahead, Orcors off the wall, somersaults, jumps in front of the kid and just like <laughs> slides, lands, and stops the kid from orcors, getting to the gate. That's a new one. Orcor. Orcor. Orcor, orcors. Uh, Grant. <laughs> Is Renick smart? Grant, what um, is your result? I got one four, and one four. the other ones were both twos. Okay. So one success um, at a cost. You. You make it to Kolsch, um, because Kolsch is confused at what at how Branak is moving. Um, but what happens when you slam into her? Ow. As she uh, just stops from running, and you just don't stop in time, and you just like bash yeah. into her. Yeah. Okay. I think it would be an a, more of an aggressive tackle than than like a protective like diving over, and like. Mm-hmm worried about the incoming projectiles uh, because I wasn't expecting her to stop running so suddenly. So um, it would be, yeah, it would be like a, like a tackle as opposed to like, get down. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to give Sam a choice. Um, is Kolsch hurt a little or is Kolsch feeling betrayed? Oh, Kolsch is just hurt a little. Hurt a little. Okay. Um, roll a d6. Ah. She's like rough and tumble, flirting. Yeah, rough. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> one, one. You take. You lose one hope. Um, Moontooth and uh, Ovlov, as this um, former companion of yours is catapulted in uh, multiple parts and just falls in front of you, a disembodied. Um, what is the reaction that you have? Olaf sees like orcs flying through the air and and weapons being hurled at this fortress and looks down to Moontooth and he says, I have work to do. And he, and if this is not in the realm of a beast speaker, I don't know what is, but he spreads his huge, massive muscular arms that like crack and bend and stretch. And he grows out of his arms, these huge bat wings as just like (laughs) his body musk and body hair, like sprouts and grows. And he goes aloft as he, his feet suddenly become not prehensile. But like his feet are almost like bat feet. Like and so talons? he grabs his yeah. huge bony shaft and lifts himself <laughs> out of this primordial ooze that he's just helped create and <laughs> moves to the sky to bat to literally and figuratively like bat these weapons back to the enemy camp like a huge missile deflector, just like bat wings and feet and stink and beast and just like sex is cool but we have a fortress to defend okay um (laughs) moontooth (laughs) do you see this as a betrayal (gasps) or do you see this as of love leaving leading for sure this is leaving Oh, I need to... Or I thought you said leaving. No, no, leaving, leaving. Like, is this a betrayal? Is it leaving, or is it something else? Like, if you have another another way of resolving this, that's also. Uh, I was gonna say that this is like further inspiration. And, oh, like, this is now it's like not just the full transformation, but like everything that's led up to it. There's now like Moontooth has finally found their reason for fighting. Okay, and their reason for like needing to protect okay somebody. before we confirm this um eric if you could roll yes. um your red black and one white all right and let's see how successful this transformation and flying towards the enemy camp is because this could go very badly yeah uh red is a five okay that's one success. black is a six 
That's also successful. White is a one. White is a one. So that's two successes. You are able to do this. But what is yeah. what is revealed about your secret in the moment that you transform? That this brutal beast of an orc, this like angry that everybody just assumed was nothing but violence and gore. Um specifically to to Moontooth um is largely a front and that of love is literally of love and is nothing but a romantic and it was there in plain sight <laughs> <laughs> And then indeed, um, for a hopeless you know. romantic masked behind the big brutish, right? Exactly. Yep. He's a he's a softy. Who <laughs> also it. feels inspired by this new like physical level of mm-hmm. love that he's just experienced in a pit of pigs. Yeah. To to. Just you were just mucking about. Mucking about. Rut- rutten. Yeah, hey. rutten and mucking. <laughs> and now um, he's he's like full of vim and vigor and he's just going to kick the shit out of anyone who would hurt his moon tooth or his home. Yeah, no, I feel like that is that is very much what happens. Um, moon tooth, you gain a mark on Ovlov uh, because of the, the secret being revealed. Um, but moon tooth, uh, in your um, inspired moment now what do you do as a reaction uh so uh moontooth is now going to uh try to follow as much as possible um underneath obviously because Oslo is now flying um and basically trying to provide as much support as they can uh because now views is views is <laughs> views um Avlov is like the new person that he needs to be a bodyguard for and whereas okay. there wasn't a connection to the warlord um so wasn't ever really very good at that uh this is now like coming into his own and uh, he- what what kind I'm of here Whitney physical my like Kevin Costner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the what is the like physical action? What's the physical support that you provide? Like, do you use like uh, do you use the catapults against the enemy lines? Do you like mm-hmm. open the gates and lead like just like a charge against to offer ground support? Who are you? Uh, is Ovlov like outside of the? Ovlov has gone. Ovlov is just going to rain down <laughs> fury and destruction. Uh, no, I wouldn't be. I yeah, Ovlov is. I uh, sorry. Uh, Moontooth is like right there underneath him, taking on any ground forces that are there. Okay, uh, just like running out. Leroy Jenkins it out. Um, give me um, with the explanation that you gave me. Give me a red, black, and a white, and any yeah. advantages that you haven't used yet. Yeah, I'm going to use one of my advantages. Uh, red is six. Okay. Uh, black is six. And one of the advantages is four. The other one is a one. Okay, so that, is, that is a complete success. However, um, your reputation causes problems. Uh, you either hurt someone or every other orc in the scene, which right now is only Ovlov, um, takes a mark on you. Uh, I think... Uh, of love will take a mark on me. Okay. Um, How does your reputation cause problems? How does fearful moon tooth? Say, I think knowing that in the past I have always been so like my reputation has that I've been like been the person that would run away or like not ever engage. Um, maybe it distracts of love because now there is like wanting to then as opposed to like just trying to bat away the weapons and all that sort of stuff is now also trying to be like extra careful of protecting me because isn't sure that I can do it on my own because I've never shown any prowess in that or that sort of thing. Okay. And how does your secret show in some way? And Ovlov, so you take two marks on um, Wundus. Right on. Uh, so my secret is now fully out. Um, 
which was I needed to finally tell of love how I felt. Oh. Uh, verbally and physically. Uh, <laughs> and Oh, you, you told them good. Don't worry. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's clear. Like there's no there's no yeah. There's, right. there's no, there's, there's not a <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. Um, Ovlov knows that Ovlov has these two marks on you. Um, and looking at the time as well, uh, um, apparently we are being told that a t shirt will be going up in the silent auction soon. Uh, with well, this is awkward. Um, <laughs> yes! so we have inspired merchandise from <laughs> big gay orcs. Um, now. This game usually ends with the fortress falling into enemy hands. However, the way in which all of you have been so stellar in um, not necessarily defending it, but like coming up with solutions, and you've all been so caring towards it and protecting the people inside it. I am going to give everyone an epilogue. Um, we are coming close to the end of our time. Um, and the epilogue is going to be, I would like each of our orcs to tell me or to tell everyone what is the last thing you do in this night before dawn comes, knowing well that you have you haven't won won the war yet, but you have defended the fortress for one more day, and for one more night you will have the warmth and company of your companions and fellow orcs. But what is the last act that ensures that this fortress remains at least one more day to fight? And we're going to go round, starting with Grank. What is the last either heroic? Like it could be that you just choose to leave. That is that is entirely up to you. Like this is not your scene. You just want to go. But what is your last act that ensures that the fortress remains one more day? Um. <clears throat> so if if Kolsch will allow it, it's kind of like that scene at the end of Speed, where Keanu Reeves <laughs> is like laying on the ground, like. You know, and I'm Keanu, of course. I have to be. Uh, <laughs> I love him. Okay, so um Grank is just gonna look down at Kolsch and say, I'm sorry if I hurt you. I have to go and help protect the keep. And he's gonna like help you up out of the mud and like dust off your shoulders a little bit and say if I don't come back, I just, I just want you to have this. And he like gives you the diary and he's going to follow, he's going to follow Moontooth and Avlov out the front to go and protect, um, protect the home that we've made together. Um, oh. And then he's going to look back like just as he's leaving out of the front gate and it's closing he's just going to turn around and look back and give you a little nod and then raise his great axe and just like run in slow motion towards the enemy lines that are advancing that's all that's probably the last time you would see grank i think um we can roll for it Um... yeah okay yeah, roll for it. Uh, roll a, a black and a red and a white uh, because you have found you a new body to guard. Yes. I mean, she's not just a body, but you know. Oops, I'm going to re-roll one because it <laughs> fell onto my lap. I rolled three fives, so success. Grank, after the last battle is over, um, Grank doesn't come back. <gasps> Grank comes back at dawn, alone, covered in more blood than anyone has ever seen an orc covered in. But he has his axe, he has maybe a couple of missing fingers, there's maybe a bit of his ear has been bit off, but he has fought hard and he has done well and he has succeeded. And he returns at dawn, just with as dawn, as the sun rises, just Grank, just like on the side of the hill, wind blowing from somewhere, a raven calls above, and a goose also calls on the other side. <laughs> he's just like using his axe as like a little bit of a cane as he's like yep. hobbling down the hill now. So there is a moment where people go, oh no, Grank has fallen, but no, Grank returns at dawn. 
Um, Mundus, what is the final act that you perform to maintain this fortress? Uh, so I'd be, I mean, I guess I'm out there in the battle. You're in the thick of the battle, which is like, there's this giant bat orc in the sky. There's a a very exactly. angry double axed bar barbarian orc just like going left and right. Uh, yeah, I think I I feel like I would be, um, as opposed to the sort of like great axe barbarian style, would be more like a little bit more lithe and like very quick and calculating strikes. So, uh, seeing if I can, if there's any way to like identify maybe like an enemy commander. Or something like that, and then mm -hmm. that's my, my target. I'll Tip grant for as long as, uh, yeah, as long as um, Avlov is still like looking like they're doing well. If Avlov mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would start to struggle, then I would for sure be yep. back in there. But um, roll a roll a black and a red, and I'll use my last advantage die. Last advantage, yeah, black and red and white. Uh. Uh, red is four, black is three, white is four. That's two successes. You you do eventually spot what is clearly one of the commanders of this army, um, Sir Sir Vernizak, um, of the human army, and you strike her down. Uh, she is taken, and she is no longer a threat and she can no longer send more armies and that is how you make sure that Ovlov is safe and can continue his rampage from above and you make it back to the fortress together after this battle is over. Um, Branek, what is your final act in the defense of this fortress for this night? As this is going on, from a rampart you hear echoing, walls may crumble and buildings may fall, <laughs> but as long as we're united, hey, there's hope for us all. <laughs> Stand together, united as one, till the battle is won. <laughs> Fuck yes. Amazing. Yes. 20 bucks donated, you can have the sheet music. That's awesome. <laughs> get, in the com get in the comments. 20 bucks right now. <laughs> I um, will transcribe it. That was dope. That's Just incredible. so you know, Taryn, while you were singing that, I was like pantomiming or I was miming, uh, uh, like swinging a great axe in slow motion. <laughs> like yeah, there's like, this like nice. anime on full on nice. slow motion battle as yeah. this sound like plays <laughs> over the rest of the scene. So um, good. <laughs> the rest of the scene, which still includes Ovalov, what is your final act? So with this like amazing music going, Ovalov has gathered up so many bodies of our enemies and he brings them back to our fortress. All of them are dead except for one. And he drops all of these bodies at the feet of Moontooth in the middle of the boar pits and the boars begin devouring the bodies of our enemies and Avlov yes. takes this moment to give this offering of devotion and love to Moontooth and brought the one back alive so that he could express his love physically one more time to Moontooth in front of a live victim of our enemies to send that victim of our enemies back to his people to express <laughs> to his people what happens when you fuck with us <laughs> if you fuck with us we're gonna fuck with each other on the bodies of your ancestors <laughs> and don't fucking try it again <laughs> Oh, I I saw the lead up to it. Nice. And I was so glad that it landed. That was excellent. Um, Kolsch, 
what is your I ain't final... even gonna roll on that shit. Don't, no, don't, don't, don't <laughs> need to roll that. That was great. Um, Polsh, what is your final act? I guess after probably just falling head over heels in love with Grank. Yay. In the two <laughs> seconds that they, they left and gave the diary and walked away. Uh, I guess Kolsch probably went out into the fields and was using magic to try and take some guys out so that she could get a little bit closer to Moontooth and tell him them that she has a big crush on them. Whoops. <laughs> hey, don't have to be monogamous. Um, that is true, as long as everybody yeah, involved is, is cool with it, hey. Um, I don't think we need to roll this one. I think this is <laughs> just professing over to Moontooth, this this new newly invigorated and brave, no longer fearful Moontooth on the battlefield as Cole's just like casting spells, just like blasting, like just heads flying, shields going, just like reaches up and say, Hey, I have a really big crush on you. <laughs> the only thing I would add is like if I survive the night and I come back in the morning, I just want to tell everybody how proud I am of them, how much they've grown as orcs and how, how good that they've done to protect our, our home and our family. It's going to be one of those speeches where like I start crying. <laughs> <laughs> in all of this, as as Grant comes back in the morning, as Ovlov and um, Moontooth return from the bullpens again, for the, <laughs> you just like every now and then they just disappear and then come back again. <laughs> Um, Branak is uh, still singing and everyone is joining and is teaching everyone how to sing the song that led everyone to victory and Kolsch is like moon-eyed at Moontooth and is like every now and then like sneeze of maybe maybe she can sneak away to the bullpens too we'll see we'll see how, it, how <laughs> where things go um, Hungar in all of this is just having lost almost all hope during the events of the night he had one hope left um <laughs> And having been rebuked and not being able to form a connection with any of the orcs in the fort, he left. He left as the battle wasn't happening. And as the camera pans over, as he leaves and heads towards the enemy encampment, he says, I'll make them pay. I'll make all of them pay. <laughs> they will all fall. And then I will <laughs> fall. With the toe. <laughs> <laughs> and that is where we end a thousand orchid blossoms a love story big gay orcs played by the team of Rawcat reeds with um we're just going to round everyone we can uh reintroduce ourselves if you want to plug anything where can people find you on the internet or not on the internet if people if people you didn't brother didn't get found by anyone um let's go round with my new screen which is going to be jesse Thanks everybody for watching. This was a blast. I had so much fun. I'm just Jesse D. If you like my whole deal, you can find me on Wednesdays on my channel starting around 6.30 p.m. Eastern where I play Divinity Original Sin 2 with some buds. We're a whole skeleton party. Sometimes we accidentally and intentionally light ourselves on fire. So just come check it out. I'm also on uh, Cybernation Uncensored on Thursdays. If you're a fan of Star Trek, I play a Bajoran First Officer uh in a star trek adventures campaign so yeah love to cool. see you that starts at 9 p.m eastern uh thank you for playing with us uh colon uh again colon um yeah this is super fun uh thanks alex for the invite uh and hope everyone enjoyed it uh i don't really do much on social media so and i don't stream or anything like that so i don't have anything else <laughs> But you do a lot of sports and with a lot of queer folks and you do a lot of great stuff. I sure do. Yeah. Um, Sam. Hey, I'm Sam. Uh, I had so much fun getting to play with y'all and want to thank everyone who tuned in and donated. That was excellent. I don't have any social media to plug. I'm just going to go have a shower and turn my entire house. <laughs> <laughs> Just remove the green from every single inch of your neck up. It's the ears that are really 
Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the it's going to take a week Ears to get all good. the green over that. Uh, Taryn. Hello, I am Taryn Van Ettinger. I am on SoundCloud as Terrence Van E. Um, and I have uh, a variety of musical things up there. Um, some instrumentals, uh, one vocal bit. Um, but uh, feel free to check that out. I'm also in a podcast called End of Plays that is in the, uh, right now it's kind of in the beginning stages. Um, we haven't released any episodes yet, but we've recorded several. Awesome. Um, so keep an eye out for that uh, when we actually, when we start getting released. And um, that is me. Yeah. Passing over to Eric. Uh, my name is Eric Pavey. I'm on the Instagram at charisma underscore monster. Um, I am a manager at Wayfinder Beer in Portland, Oregon. Please come and see us. The beer is delicious. Our merch is super cool. Again, we run a and d game, which is a three-course dinner plus D&D. All you have to do is show up. Dice are provided. <clears throat> and uh, so you can find that on our website at wayfinder.beer and um that's it i had so much fun playing with all of you uh to everyone who donated this is a super rad cause and thank you so so much it means everything to me in light of recent political events this past week which are just disgusting um thank you for your allyship and your support it means everything thank you i not add anything to that that is exactly what i was going to say um i would like to thank also rachel and trisha for setting this up for setting up the community and the charity event and uh, inviting all of us to play um there is more coming in 15 to 20 minutes uh, regency ladies death becomes her entirely original game developed by rachel um and it's going to be played it's a it's a character funnel if characters die that the new one just pops up uh jesse and i played together last year um, in not the same game, but we did play together last year. But I'm now getting confused because I've been on stream for three hours. Um, I'm Alex. If you want to find me on the internet, please don't. Um, I'd rather you didn't. Um, I don't do this very often, um, but I do talk about um, roleplay games sometimes in different spheres. You can find me mostly on Instagram as alexv.fyi. Um, and thank you, all of you players, for playing with me today. Uh, thank you all of you who donated uh, for donating, helping us with the story and helping Rainbow Refugee. And thank you, Rachel and Trisha, again. And now back to the disembodied voice of technology that is Rachel. And back to Trisha for stalling for time.